This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so today we're gonna change a TXV and then we're gonna change two of these oil fill pots here. What I've done, we got a medium temp rack here, we have the low temp rack over here. I went ahead and shut down 34 and 35, which are medium temp. So what that did is it closed my suction sort valves here and here. We've got this one open. I've driven this one in here. We have a stem right here on the inside. So what that does is it uh, opens it wide open. So these are sort valves, basically an EPR. It regulates the suction pressure. That way it maintains constant temperature. So since we only have this medium temp open and I've closed these two by killing the power of these solenoids, we have a crossover here that I've opened up and that's allowing that to suck down. Normally these are running up in the, uh, I think 45, 55 pound range. So we've got her all the way down to 12, 13-ish. So we come over here, we close, close our ball valve there. We see that it's holding here, which tells us that there's no refrigerant left, otherwise it would expand up. Now we can come back over here to our crossover. We close it. Now we're gonna come back over here to the front open these other two solenoids back up so that they can continue to run. And that's gonna put that medium temp back into operation. When we get back here, we'll have to shut everything down because we got oil coming through each one of these pots here on the side. Basically the way that works, you have an oil separator here. It separates it as it gets high enough to float, which is right here. Freezes up, blasts that high pressure through the oil filter into the top of your oil reservoir here. You've got a check valve here, which is a 20 pound check. Basically what it does is it puts high pressure into here. Then when that ball there shuts, it's got that pressure in there. This check valve basically allows it to drain off that extra pressure back into the suction header and keeps it about 20 pounds above it. That way it has some pressure to push itself into the floats. I should be calling them oil floats, not oil pots. At this point, to be by the book, you'd want to pull out of your Schrader port here, pump that refrigerant back into the suction rack here, into the header, and then uh, we'll go out there and do the change of the TXV. TXV, um, basically I completely cleaned it and it did not do any good. So what we got here is, I call them a build a valve, but we have a valve body. Same thing I did on one of my other videos. We have the head and then we have the cartridge. The cartridge can be changed to what size you need as far as the tonnage. We also have our oil float here that I was talking about. This part here hooks onto the uh, side of the compressor here. You have the float in the front, which will show you the side glass, which we've got one of those. And you have your adjustments here on top. And then this here, uh, we don't pretty much use that one there on this particular uh, setup here. So on this part here, we're gonna go ahead and put this together. Uh, this rack was originally, I think, R22. They converted it over to 507. All right, this was supposed to be a flare and it's not. Well, it's always good when they get a little dent in it like that. So now we've got to go through more hassle. This was gonna be a nice quick change out. Now it has just gotten to be more of a hassle because now we're going to have to sweat it in. It's borderline between A and a B. The last one I had couldn't feed enough, so I went with a B the last time. I'm just gonna go with B this time. Since it's sweat in, I'm not going to wanna put it in there. On the other valve, this piece right here, this rod was all gummed up. I couldn't even pull it out of the body. I literally had to clean it up with sandpaper and wire brush wheel and all that and had a heck of a time. Because we're gonna sweat this in, I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. And then we'll put those other components in there that have seals that can uh, get destroyed. And then here is the head for it, which we'll go ahead and just put that on now. So now anybody comes along, they'll know exactly what kind of head it has. Okay, we're gonna move this stuff out of the way so we can actually get to our panel here, there's our valve. To make it easy on myself, I put those as a bad TXV, that'll wipe right off. Yeah, that's not good, is it? So yeah, that's 36C and we shut down 36. That one should have been done and emptied. I'm not sure what's going on there. Was that 36? No, it's some 36, shoot. So I did the wrong one. That's why I actually worked on both these circuits last time. So 
another good reason why you want to double check. As you've seen, I had a little bit of liquid there. So we're gonna go ahead and back that out. That way it starts metering like it should. Okay, slowly open her up. Go ahead and open up our liquid here. And basically we just gotta do the opposite of what we got going on over here. As you notice here, we're really high. I don't have, I'm, I'm sure they make a tool for this, a little stem. The regular refrigeration wrench does not fit it. So once you get it turning, you can kind of do the rest by hand. I didn't have ice on it. 36 is open, we're gonna close these two here. Open this back up, slowly. Obviously, using a wrench on it like this is not a good idea there. You can see it dropping. You just gotta be careful. That's brass, that's soft. So that's draining down. Like I said, we've got liquid cut off. We're opening up the valve that restricts the uh, pressure so they can maintain a certain saturated suction temperature, which they're running somewhere in the mid 30s right there. So that's on an R22 scale, but this is running 507. I don't have that scale on there, but either way, like I said, I just killed the these two solenoids here. We're pulling down here. And then the way I check to make sure that I'm actually completely empty or not is I will close this valve and then see if it comes up in pressure. It appears that we've got it that off. Go ahead and valve this back off. Now we'll open this valve back up. That's basically letting the other ones go back into service. The reason why I did that was so that I wouldn't suck them down as low as I was doing on the other one that I actually wanted to pump down. We're not going to be able to use nitrogen. Obviously I'm pretty big into using it when you can, but you can't do it on a rack like this. One little braze joint, two small braze joints, it's not going to be your issue. Your problem's going to come when you're two in a whole line. Hold into the pocket there. There we go. On and off. You really shouldn't cool down your solder joints like that, but at this point, you're talking a TXV valve. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll start back here and slowly go like that and work my way up to it. My valve body's not hot at all, as you can see. As you can see, there's just not a lot of great room here to work with. Could have made it a little bit longer. There we go. Okay, she's in there nice and tight. I got all the way around it. We'll start up here in the body. It's not even sizzling there. As we get closer, it starts to sizzle. It's all brass to brass. As long as we don't get it overly stupid hot, we won't have any problems. Now, when we get that in there, we might have a hard time getting that cartridge in there. Yeah, I think we can get it in there. Yep, we can get it in there. We'll just wait for that. Just cut it long ways and uh, just barely nick the outside of that. Should be able to get on there with the cutter like this and it'll help reround it too. Look at that. So cut it right off. There's what I used. Just went. Yeah. Now we're just gonna smack out any shavings that might have got in there. So that's why I keep brushes like this. You get in there. That way, if there is anything in there, you pull it right back out. Back at it. There you go. I'll leave a little bit of a gap so I can get my uh, alloy on there and then pull it back into this pocket here.
a little bit extra goobers on the bottom, but it does not appear that I've taken the silver out of the brass there, so we should be good. Body's not overly hot. I can open that back up before we forget. We're gonna have to pull a vacuum on this. seats down in there. Don't need a stupid amount, just need to get some on there. Baco. All my tools are down in the description down below, my most common ones that you use. So you can check those out. And then don't forget to discount code survival at uh, True Tech Tools. Save yourself 8%. These are have so much down pressure that you can actually put them on backwards. You've seen me do that a couple times today. Don't want to get too stupid. TXV. Here's the one we were working on 36. We're already at 40. We've got everything back capped up. We're at 57 pounds. It's a suction 507 here. It comes in about 19 degree evaporator. So at about 15 to that, that's about the temperature you're going to be running, which we're averaging about 35 ish. So let's just say it's 20, add 10 to it, there'd be 30, and 15 would be 35. That's what we're holding when you look up here, 34, 33, 35. And normally these temperatures are gonna hold pretty steady when you graph them. They pretty much just hold right in there. That's the reason why we use sort valves instead of solenoids, because solenoids cause swings when things shut down. This is a sort, well, these, yeah, these are sort valves. They're a little bit different than the one I'm used to. It might be a different brand. But either way, that's that's how they work. Basically, they're raising the suction pressure up and uh, calculate it off of that. Here on the back side, you can see that's where the oil float is. It comes down that 3 8 line. It comes across. There's another T going to that one. Another T to that one. Another T to that one. It comes on over here. T to that one. It comes down up into the bottom of a reservoir right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna empty these compressors out. I can either drain it out of the bottom or I can actually use the pump themselves to pump it out. I just gotta get it below the level that's in here in the crankcase so that I'm not spilling it all over the place. You'll notice here, we're completely full. And we're completely full here too. It should only be technically half, which all of those run a little higher, but I've got these backed out all the way. I've completely emptied them out and it came right back within about a half an hour. So they're, they're malfunctioning. I put a marker on my wrench so I can tell how many turns I'm getting out of things. Something I've kind of 
just started doing recently. Kind of makes it easy when you're making adjustments. Basic gauges. We'll bleed these out. Could use a valve core depressor tool, which is something I was starting to use. Works really well. Kind of sucks, but whatever. We've had this bucket before for scrap stuff. We'll just bleed out a little bit here. refrigerant no oil yet because it's not pumping so unless it's pumping it's not going to pump out yeah you can hear it dumping yeah it's not going to win very well up against that if it's dumping so what we'll do is stop it from filling I really don't need no extra. That's gonna bleed down that check valve I told you about. There we go. That should be running. Let's check it compressor. So let's go ahead, come down here, tell it to run. We gotta log in like that. Pull it up, override it, go to three. Override, yes, enter, boom, on, go. We'll pull it back up, go to override again. That way we can shut it down when we get down where we need it at. Go override. We can change it here real quick. So we'll let that do its thing there. We'll use the pump to get it out. Now I could pump it into a bucket and then pump it manually into it, but if I can use this to do it, that's what I'm gonna do. Yep, there's the oil. It's down quite a bit. Let's stop it there, see where we're at. That's liquid or something going on there. Okay, we get her down a little bit lower. What we can do is we can stop that like that. Let's turn the compressor off, see where that oil goes to. It looks to me like we might be all the way down there at the bottom. Um, you can see a little something in the sight glass, but it looks to me like we got it. But then you gotta go into the actual setup. We gotta go into setup now. We gotta go in there and turn off proof on one, so we need to tell the, turn the proof off. Hit no, and then go over to oil, go close, none, enter. So there, we took all that off at the same time. Now we're gonna go down here and turn this next one off, none, and we'll come over here and tell it no also. So there you go. So now we've got that turned out. Now it's not gonna alarm out when we run it or don't run it. So I should have probably done that first, but either way, we shut it down. So while we're waiting on that, let's go over here and turn, close the discharge. Turn the compressor off there on that one there. That way it doesn't try to run. We're gonna isolate it completely out. Okay, that's the number two compressor. That one's valved off. This one here is still draining down a little bit yet. Just about there on that. Let's go and get the suction while we're waiting. When we do this, this is gonna valve separate us from the rack and the only pressure is gonna be on the actual compressor itself. And then we can relieve that pressure and then do our operation. Okay, that one's valved off too. So we don't, it didn't make it all the way up to there, but it's definitely there. We're valved off in all levels. Now we can relieve some of that suction pressure off of it. If this is completely overfilled, it literally will blow oil out at you. There you can see our suction side is down to zero. It means we're pressure's off of our crankcase. There's that. And that, and the crap. Oh, make sure you remove this stupid thing. That keeps it so the float don't move around too much. Can't really see a whole lot going on in there, but basically it's got a ball float in there. Basically keeps your oil level based off of that your fill coming into the top. So if we do it like that, that's gonna match up pretty decent to that. We should be able to make it work. We've got new glass here, because these obviously didn't come with glass. I don't know why 
they do that. See, it's machined out on both sides. And that leaves you a hell of a gap. I had a leak the last time, because it's just not much. And when you look at it, it's barely sticking above it. You look at this side. Just barely above it. I don't know if that is just barely enough. I mean, it, there's no squishy squishy there at all. different ones here. You got a flat one, you got two round ones. Hopefully it seals better than it did the last time, because the last time it didn't seal for crap. Don't want to get too crazy with this, because it will possibly crack the glass. So, what sucks about that is you can't even use a regular ratcheting wrench on it. 7 16 seal in there. I don't know what else you're going to be able to do. In reality, you can put it like that and the other side would hold it. It's perfectly flat on this other side. I'm going to flip it over and put it like that. We'll just leave this groove on the outside. That's how the compressor is. It's perfectly flat. I don't like the fact of putting two of them there and I just checked with our most uh, experienced guy and he wasn't real certain either on what we could do. I mean, he said he's done it before, but I don't know. YouTube land, where's my YouTube police at? One of them's gonna tell me what I did wrong. I'm gonna look like an idiot, whatever. So I, I know it's not gonna leak. It just may not be kosher. From what I see, that glass is etched in the middle. So like it's metal and the glass went down into it. So I don't think it's gonna be any stronger forward or reversed. There you go. So everything's back. We got oil down there. We got oil there. It's filling up pretty quick. Looks like it probably be about the halfway mark. And then uh, to raise and lower it, you just take that brass cap off. And there's a silver cap and then you can crank it in or out. So let's roll it. Discharge open, suction's open. We have oil in it, we have no leaks. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing on the front. There you go. We 
you got this hooked back up. I, ba I took it all the way down and backed it up two and a half turns. Five is factory default. Okay, we just finished our vacuum and just released the suction pressure. So, making sure we don't have anything leaking out of any of that, which it does not appear that we are. Okay, we're opening that up. We unhooked our hose. We bled everything out prior to. We're gonna pump this in. I get that bottom filled up. So right there. All right, it's finally heat. <coughs> finally hit the top. All right, the Pretzel Wetzel Advanced Refrigeration Podcast Guru just got back with me. And so he told me and sent me the directions that I couldn't find. I didn't look for them, I gotta admit, that's my stupidity. You're supposed to put the flat one on the float side and the O-ring on the glass side and double it up. Well, we went ahead and corrected that. The uh, I don't know if it would have made a difference or not. It honestly, I don't think it would have, but we've got it corrected. And I don't want to show you guys purposely how to do something wrong. I, I admitted it in the beginning, I didn't know how it was supposed to go. I didn't have instructions. I didn't look them up. I thought, well, let's just get it done. It's a stupid O-ring. So we're running right about halfway mark there with that. So hopefully this one here will be about the same. That was the one that was overfilled originally. Used non-chlorinated brake cleaner, cleaned everything up on that. All my uh, valves are open and uh, oil level is up to the second one now because we shoved so much back in, but we got plenty of room there on that. Uh, going into 36 dairy, uh, 36 degrees, the other one's running 34 and the other one's 35. Superheat should be right in that nine to 10 area. We'll check it when we come back. I'm not messing with it today. There's always something more to do at these stores. We'll deal with it then. But uh, everything is back up and going. We're all hooked up. It's done right. You're good to go. Oil's good there and there. All of our alarms are turned back on. Proofs are all on. We don't want to ignore that because that would not shut it down then if for some reason it loses oil pressure. Uh, oil pressure, Centronic switch here is just going straight into the control board, which then is eventually switched over to the Emerson. We literally have old control boards on these. They're ancient, but it is what it is. I am not seeing anything out of the ordinary there. Everything looks pretty good. The only one that's high is uh, number 35, and that's defrost. So we're good. That's open. We're halfway there. All right, guys. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. A uh, little screw up there on that seal thing. I won't forget that. Uh, so thanks to old Brett Witzel, the pretzel. Make sure you check him out, the Advanced Refrigeration Podcast. That's uh, If you want to learn some advanced refrigeration stuff that's pretty technical, there's stuff in there that you can really learn. Check out their podcast. You can find it on any of the platforms. So thanks, Brett. So yeah, I just wanted to make sure I did it right. Um, I think the other way would have worked just fine, but whatever. Uh, TXV and everything went real well. I uh, should have made sure that we had a flare fitting that would, uh, or a flare valve that would have helped a lot. But it's Friday and it's almost seven o'clock. So we're almost home finally. That's about a good hour and a quarter away. So, and that's doing 60 mile an hour back the whole way. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Later.